The Tulane Executive MBA program has given me the business acumen to perfectly complement my technical expertise, creating limitless career opportunities. I'm Claude Davis, principal scientist and official spokesperson for Zatarans. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And by Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. From Commander's Palace Restaurant in the Garden District in New Orleans, we're out to lunch with Peter Raschuti. Peter Raschuti is Tulane University's A.B. Freeman School of Business professor and director of the award-winning Birkenrode Reports. It's business, New Orleans style. Hi, I'm Peter Raschuti. Welcome to Out to Lunch. If you live in New Orleans, you know one thing for sure. Summer here lasts a long time. It can start getting hot as early as Jazz Fest, and some years it's still hot at Thanksgiving. Lately, there have been years when you can wear shorts and flip-flops on Christmas Day. Because of the long summer, we've gotten pretty good at dressing for the weather here. Did you know that New Orleans is actually the home of the seersucker suit? Seersucker was originally a lightweight fabric that was used in India to make clothing for laborers. In 1909, New Orleanian Joseph Haspel designed the first men's suit made of seersucker. The seersucker suit went on to become a fashion staple. The label in the suit simply said Haspel. Today, the company is called Haspel. They still make seersucker suits and other menswear items. And Haspel is still a family company. Joseph Haspel's great, great granddaughter, Lori Haspel Aronson, is president and CEO of Haspel. Lori, welcome out to lunch. Thank you, Peter. I'm so excited to be here and talk about Haspel today. Well, that is great. And I am a 42 regular, if that is <laughs> in your plans. They, we uh, might have a few of those okay. hanging. <laughs> when it comes to the creation of local men's summer weight clothing, the clock didn't stop in 1909. In 2018, Claiborne Schmidt was inspired by the traditional Gaia Barra shirt and created a New Orleans version. The traditional Gaia Barra shirt is sometimes called the Mexican wedding shirt, though it's widely believed to have been originated in Cuba. It's a short sleeve shirt that's worn untucked and traditionally has two rows of closely sewn vertical pleats that run down the shirt, mimicking the look of a scarf it were, if it were hung around your neck. Claiborne has given his Gaia Barra shirt a New Orleans twist. The pleats are replaced with embroidered patterns. There are bunches of different styles, one with crawfish and trumpets, one with a saint's theme, one with a festival theme. There's a Mardi Gras one and, and more. The label on the shirt says Dat Mumbo Shirt. In the short time that they've been in existence, Dat Mumbo Shirt has become a local fashion success story. Claiborne Schmidt, welcome to Out to Lunch. Thank you very much. And these shirts on the table will fit a 42 regular. Oh, this is a... <laughs> Lori, since you took over running Haspel in 2012, you have revolutionized the company. You've partnered with designers to make Searsucker a hip fashion fabric. You've introduced new products, including a year-round line of sportswear and leather accessories. You rebranded the company in 2014, but probably the most revolutionary change of all is your decision to take the products out of brick and mortar stores and sell them exclusively online. I believe since you made that move in 2018, you've seen sales increase. That sounds counterintuitive, even in these difficult times for retail. You wouldn't think that having fewer retail outlets would increase sales. Is that in fact what has happened? If so, do you know why? Well, gosh, you just loaded me with all kinds of information there. <laughs> Let me just give you the Cliff Notes version okay. and hit the rewind button for just a minute. So Searsucker is what put us on the map. Searsucker is what made my great-grandfather famous. It made Haspel come to its notoriety that it is today. And we've really revolutionized Searsucker from what the perception is to what I need to make sure people really understand what Searsucker is. It's not necessarily a suit and it's not necessarily a fabric. Searsucker is a process. It's what you do to the fabric to make the pucker on the fabric so that it lifts itself off the skin and it keeps you cool in the summertime. So that's what Searsucker is. You can Searsucker, and I'm using that as a verb with some 
air quotation marks at the moment, but you can seersucker just about anything, whether it's cotton, linen, um, even wool. We've done a wool seersucker suit before. It's for comfort, it gives it texture, it gives it some sex appeal rather than just having a flat fabric. So what we have done since I relaunched the brand in 2014 is taken that popular I'm going to call it fabric for just a moment and take in the colors that you expect to know the the color palette the blue and white the green and white tan and white gray and white we have nine colors of seersucker right now and we've turned it into sportswear we've turned it into accessories we've turned it into tonal colors so that you can wear it 12 months out of the year and not just those three or four months in the hot hot summer so that's what we have done so i want to at least clarify really yeah. what seersucker is for the conversation and as far as pulling out of the brick and mortars and going to the internet let me just say primarily because of my age i suppose i am a retail shopper. I buy clothes every now and then over the internet, but I really am a retail shopper and I firmly believe in the retail stores. I honestly do. And here in New Orleans, uh, Rubenstein's is our partner. They're essentially our shop and shop, our flagship. You can find basically anything in the tailored part of, of the collection in Rubenstein's. And, um, what we have done is we partnered with Rubensteins to have our tailored shown there so that we can have a brick and mortar presence. But the decision was made two years ago, like you said, Peter, to have everything online. I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to at least have one place where a consumer could find our products. And the problem is that even the best of retailers, and I'm not talking about Rubenstein's at the moment, just in terms of the hundreds of retailers that we used to service across the country. As good as they are, you can never find the full offering in any of the stores. And perhaps they may have two or three of the colors of Searsucker, but they don't carry all nine or the linens or the poplins. And there's so much to offer. And the only place we can really do that is online. And the reason I didn't go online until just now i wanted to wait to pull out of the retailers because i didn't want to compete with them claiborne the success of that mambo shirt is one of those types of business stories you hear that sound almost magical you, you had an idea you went ahead and acted on it and voila everything just worked out in reality when you dig into stories like this it's seldom the fairy tale that it appears the magic is accompanied by hard work stress and risk taking in your case your background was not in clothing manufacturing. You have an undergraduate degree in math, physics, and computer science. That is incredibly intimidating. And an MBA from Tulane that led you to work in information systems for companies like Entergy. How did you go about designing and manufacturing a men's shirt? Where did you even begin? Um, I began with, we had some drawings, I think that my wife drew up about what this might look like, but <clears throat> just a use one of your terms, Laurie, as a rewind a little bit, right? We went to San Miguel in Mexico as a family, and you know the girls were in school for a couple of weeks, and we were kind of partying around there. And I bought a shirt there that had similar panels like you see on this. And then, um, I guess, the next Mardi Gras, some friends of ours that we were down in San Miguel with, came to New Orleans, and she brought us all uh, some some purple guayaberas. And so I'm standing out on the parade route, you know, watching Iris and Tux go by. It's 70 degrees, the sun's out. And it dawns on me that we don't have a Mardi Gras guayabera. Well, you're welcome. So <laughs> now you do. Um, anyway, that was probably Mardi Gras 2017. And then later in December of 2017, I just decided I'd go after it. So went to Alibaba to see if I could find some manufacturers, drew up a design and sent it over there. She sent back a prototype. We made some modifications, mostly over uh, like Skype text and or email. I've never spoken by phone to the manufacturer, but, um, and we just started rolling from there. And then um, some friends and I went out in the original white Mardi Gras prototype, like December 28th, it's a short sleeve linen shirt it was 40 degrees, so it was a bit chilly, but we took a bunch of photos around uh, the French Quarter and posted them on Instagram and got a hit from a local retailer almost immediately. She said, we could sell these things, and we were off to the races. Now, you mentioned, uh, you know, Internet sales, and of course, I imagine you do a lot of social media, but it's just you and your wife, right? How are you? 
it's, it's me and my wife, and I've got a 10-year-old, Caroline, who helps out with inventory, and <laughs> Ellie, a 13-year-old, who helps out with some deliveries and such. Uh, but <laughs> it's kind of pick up and do whatever you can when, when you have some time, but it's primarily me <laughs> doing, doing everything. Now, Lori, um, the story isn't quite as um, smooth as it, it seems on the surface. The, uh, the company was sold at one point, right? It was. So the company was started in 1909 by my great-grandfather, Joseph Haspel Sr. In 1977, my grandfather, Joseph Haspel Jr., sold the company. In the early 90s, my immediate family, particularly my father, Richard, uh, got wind of the fact that the company, really the name, was for sale. Um, it had been bought and sold three times since my great-grandfather, excuse me, since my grandfather sold it. And basically there were seven or eight brands that were up for sale from a company that was going bankrupt, even though the Haspel product had still been in the marketplace all these years. But, you know, it had lost its sex appeal in, in its heyday, and it was just time to buy it back. So that's essentially what we did. Lori, the, the classic thing you'd hear is that uh, sort of like white bucks, you should only wear them during Memorial Day to Labor Day. Is, you, you want to break that. You want a 12-month Oh, we season, need a 12 month right? season. And I'll tell you right now that there are no rules. Um, you know, I, I get, we get, you know, of course, all the consumer inquiries, the emails, the phone calls all come to our office. They always have. And um, you wouldn't believe how many people ask, what do I wear with this? And it's not just the shoes, it's the shoes, it's the belt. It's how do you style it differently? And I think that's the biggest difference that we've made in all these years is learning to, I should say, giving people permission to style in particular, seersucker differently than they're used to because there's so many ways that you can wear it. And we also sell them as separates, so you get twice as much wear out of it, and you can. it's just easier to style. And men, I think, need permission to wear things a little differently than what traditional um, styles oh, we're say breaking to do. Out. We're really, yeah, we're doing a lot better. But y'all are getting pretty crazy. You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Peter Raschuti. I'm talking with Claiborne Schmidt founder, owner, and creator of Dat Mambo Shirt, and Lori Haspel Aronson, the president and CEO of Haspel, the family firm that created the Seersucker suit. We'll be right back after this very brief break. On the next Kelly Clarkson show, everybody loves Patricia. Please welcome Patricia Eaton. You raised four toddlers while doing Everybody Loves Raymond? I used to get up in the morning, and my first thought was, I could really use a beer. <laughs> and from Songland, Shane McAnally. Plus, she survived a mass shooting. I ran out, running over bodies. But had the help of a special person. She was the light at the end of the tunnel for me. Thank you. The Kelly Clarkson Show, today at 2 on NBC for New York. Introducing the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn unlimited 5% back on everything you buy at Walmart Online. It's the perfect card for all your family's hints this holiday season. Like 5% back on the air fryer Grandpa told you about when he fell asleep in his chair. He didn't fry anything. Or 5% back on the laptop your sister had carolers sing to you. Two turtledoves and a laptop for Carrie. The Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn unlimited rewards, including 5% back at Walmart Online. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One Gen A. You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Peter Raschuti. I'm talking with Lori Haspel Aronson, president and CEO of Haspel, the family firm that created the Searsucker suit, and Claiborne Schmidt, founder, owner, and creator of Dat Mambo Shirt. Now, Claiborne, I guess a lot of people have approached you about, because this isn't really high-end consulting, is, you know, expanding the line, like uh, everything seems it's all male. Would you want to do the female side? I've got a lot, received a lot of questions about that. Uh, friends' wives will come up and say, where is my dress? I need a skirt. Um, what about little boys? Do you have, you know, smaller versions? It's like, all great ideas, but, you know, I'd take them back to my wife and she says, no, 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 focus, focus, focus. So she's right. We're, we're focused. <laughs> I know that. Uh, we're, so we're focused on shirts right now. Um, and I think there probably would be some skirt or maybe dress in the future, but something, you know, simple. I don't want to get involved in super duper high fashion, ladies high fashion. You know, that's... Um, You're smart. That's not, that's, not, <laughs> that's not what we're after. Like, with the shirt, we've got five sizes. They fit most guys with, 
you know, in, in these different shapes that guys have. So it works. Um, women have all sorts of different shapes, and that's difficult to pinpoint. So I would probably go after a skirt that was kind of like five sizes, right? A five sizes right. fit all type approach. But Maybe an old one, like the old hoop skirts yes. from uh, the yes. Mississippi that's, or something. That's they... what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah. when you, I've got to ask you, how do you get uh, licensing rights? Like, for instance, the Saints... Uh, are you doing something with Tulane now? Or I'm working on, I've applied for a license with Tulane. Um, I investigated the Fleur de Lis thing and it's not trademarked. They don't. Um, and uh, so I, I thought originally about maybe, I've got an LSU, I mean, uh, excuse me, a Louisiana version that's purple and gold, um, but it doesn't have any of their hardcore trademarks on it. Um, but yes, investigating and applied for a license with Tulane. I've got a design for a Tulane shirt. Um, powder blue, like oh. the new unis, and um, hopefully they'll we'll get the license and we'll be able to produce those. Maybe maybe they'll be ready for baseball season. Oh, that would be great! You know what you don't have that Lori has? You've created a National Seersucker Day, right? We do. I can't, can't say we actually created it. We revitalized National Seersucker Day, which was started decades ago in the Senate, actually by Senator Trent Lott from Mississippi, and it. Finally, after many years, it went away because, imagine this, the, the, in the halls of Washington, they thought that was just kind of a frivolous, silly, why do we need to be talking about something other than politics? Um, and they took the fun out of it. So in 2014, <laughs> when I relaunched the brand, we went to then-Congressman uh, Bill Cassidy, who is now Senator Bill Cassidy, and we said, look, this is what we would like to do. And sure enough, he... he went up to the you know congressional floor and made a proclamation that the second Thursday in June was going to be National Seersucker Day. And what we didn't realize when we relaunched it was the, the legs that it had outside of Washington. And it became an entire PR, came, PR campaign for us. Um, so every year we've done something a little different. Uh, we do press days in New York. We do celebrations here. Um, and we've... Uh, turned it into a national holiday. What other brand has a national no. holiday? Lori and Claiborne, this is the part of the show we call your brother-in-law. You're at your desk answering some email when your phone rings and it's your brother-in-law. He usually only calls when he's having a crab boil and wants you to chip in for the keg, but this time it's different. <laughs> this time he's calling you about business. Uh, Lori, your brother-in-law says Seersucker is only one Instagram influencer away from being a fashion sensation. All Haspel needs to become the next big thing is to get a Hollywood actor or model with millions of Instagram followers to wear one of your pieces of clothing. So your brother-in-law says, if you give him a bunch of clothes, he'll take them to Los Angeles, stay out there for a few months, making contacts, and he'll make it happen. All he needs is for you to pay his accommodation, a small expense account. What do you tell your brother-in-law? Is the Instagram influencer a good marketing goal? Well, I'll tell you, in that scenario, my brother-in-law calls me every single day. Except it's not a brother-in-law. It's any number of other people. Um, but I get asked that question all the time. Um, and the truth is, we have actually, um, Haspel has been dressing presidents and celebrities for years and years and years and years. And, um, you know, one of our most famous and iconic um, dressing occasions was uh, Gregory Peck in To Kill a Mockingbird. He wore a three-piece seersucker suit, um, you know, in the courtroom scene. In fact, we were just uh, trying to work with Jeff Daniels, who just opened the show last November. In, in New York, um, right? In New York, yeah. and we actually, they decided to go in a different direction, which is okay. We've been in touch with them and sent them some clothing. But we have dressed um, celebrities um, all the time. And, you know, the difference is, is that we we dress people for a wardrobe for we do tv we do film um and we also dress people for their street clothes um but i don't pay people to do it they call us our other people um, do right they do and you know we send out clothes all the time we um we sent out a beautiful suit uh, a couple years ago to john ham and he opened up the box and said thank you and he wore it to the Mad Men rap party and i got a sweet email from him um, a couple days later he says you need to go look online look what I was wearing so you get these in, uh, soft endorsements if you will um, all the time but you know there are a lot of influencer 
influencers out there. And while we don't pay them, I will say that what the lesson we have learned is that some people are more influential than others. Um, and you find that the people who often get paid endorsements end up getting paid for hundreds. Uh, you know, they're endorsing hundreds of brands at one time and you can get lost in it. So you've got to be awfully careful on who you choose to influence your brand. Well, now you've got me wanting the Atticus Finch model. There's, uh, this Which is... we still have the archival collection <laughs> on sale at Haspel.com. Okay. Now, Claiborne, your brother-in-law says you've captured something about New Orleans because you live here and you understand the place on a deep level. No out-of-town marketing person could have come up with the designs using trumpets and crawfish. Your brother-in-law says that Mambo shirts can work in other hot climates like the Virgin Islands, Barbados, Antigua, Fiji, Tahiti. But you got to get the design right. Somebody has to immerse themselves in that local culture so they understand what will resonate with locals. Your brother-in-law says he's prepared to quit his job and spend a year living in these various tropical locations doing research for you. He'll pay for his own travel. All he needs for you to do is cover expenses. What do you tell your brother-in-law? Sure, it sounds like a boondoggle, but this is kind of grassroots research into expanding that mumbo shirt that maybe is a smart idea. What do you think? I think he's on to something. Um, I've got some other styles that you don't see here that are not tied as strongly to New Orleans. So I would hand him a box of those and send him down there and say, whatever you sell, you can keep and use that to feed yourself. Call back in six months and let me know how you've done. <laughs> and, uh, and you actually have made your way down I-10, right? To the Gulf Coast a bit? Yes, yes. Um, Went down to Destin, Orange Beach, all the way pretty much through visiting a bunch of shops. And, that's, and they're different shirts. Yeah, different shirts. Um, more of a, just a kind of a beach type designs there. Um, and that's really where my wife took a lot of initiative and to go and hit up a bunch of different shops um, in those beach areas. And it was either, she did that either to create a bunch, maybe get some new retailers or to avoid the massive family beach trip that was going on. <laughs> um, I haven't, haven't figured out if really what the, the motivation was there. It were, and Lori, Haspel is still a um, family business, right? It is. So it's, um, it's owned by our immediate family, uh, the Haspel, Haspel, Lipsy, Aronson family, to be exact. Um, but we really were so excited when we were able to get the name back in the early 90s. Um, my grandmother, uh, Bertie Haspel, you know, from here, from New Orleans, uh, was still alive at the time. And um, I, we remember seeing the excitement on her face, you know, when we bought the brand back because my grandfather, you know, had since passed. And, you know, I remember her saying it feels like home again. And what about you know, family businesses can be really rough and uh giving up the responsibilities and the money and such a, um, have you been able to um, keep that together? Usually people bring in a psychiatrist or something, but. <laughs> oh yeah, we have an in-house psychiatrist now, <laughs> but no, seriously, and actually that's me, but um, I'm actually, I run two family businesses, uh, one on my mom's side of the family and one on my dad's side of the family. So I'm quite used to um, working with family. And in my case, it's only my father in me, Richard Lipsy. And so he and I um, really run both businesses. We're the only ones who are in it, um, who, who do it on a daily basis. Now, I will also step back and say that um, 17 years ago, my father actually you know, made me president and CEO, and he really did take a step back. Um, and for someone with a dominant personality, he says, all right, when you're put in charge, you're going to take charge. And he really has let me come in and make the decisions. He really is not so much involved in the day-to-day -day anymore. And that other company you mentioned, Lipsy's, they distribute uh, firearms, which Correct. would be helpful in these, you know, these family meetings, I think. There's uh, a... <laughs> yeah. Always on hand. Yes. <laughs> Claiborne, uh, on more of a national level, I see these... Um, I don't know if these would be close to what you're doing, but these Tommy Bahama shirts, uh, is that, was that kind of an influence for you? It was. Um, and, you know, when I was making the second version, which is the, the Jazz Fest version with the crawfish and the trumpets, um, you know, I wanted to get the sizing right. I was kind of working on the sizing. So I called my good friend, Allison Rubenstein, who's married to a good friend of mine. And she says, yeah, come on down. We'll show you this and that. We could, we could work on it. So I show up there expecting to talk to Allison, and 
her mom and her dad are there and they usher me in. She hands me a beer and her mom starts pulling all these shirts off the rack and says, you know, look at this, look at this, and look at this. And she helped me design, um, you know, kind of measure out the, the size here. And she brought, you know, all the Tommy Bahamas in. And so we looked at that sizing because that's the size guy we're kind of targeting, right? And so took out my tape measure and my pencil and went to work there and just fixed uh, the sizing that you see here. New Orleans has a lot of big guys. This is it's going to work out. Laura, you know that one thing I had read, and I, I don't know if this is a big part of your business, but really fascinated me, was going into the business of making formal wear, tuxedos and such. Because I can't tell you how many events I've been invited to in the middle of the summer and thought I was going to go, and it's like, there's no way I'm going to put a tuxedo on. Uh, well, let, let me, I'll, I'm going to change your mind, actually. I'm glad you asked that question. So we came out a couple of years ago with that tonal seersucker I told you about. It's black and navy, and we turned it into a tuxedo. And it is outsold just our navy and white seersucker suit. Um, and it was so popular that we also turned it into just a regular suit, not just, you know, the, the with the tuxedo um, furnishings on it. Um, but then also we introduced a white dinner jacket at the end of last year. And in about two weeks, you are going to see, we're going to now introduce the black on black seersucker suit. It just reads as a black seersucker suit with a black satin lapel and you know the matching pants it's going to look great it's perfect for mardi gras balls when you're out there dancing and you're sweating to all the bands and you're up all night it's comfortable it's going to stretch it's going to feel good and then we also have a couple of dinner jackets we're introducing also in the formal wear collection as well as four colors of like a textured velvet this as well. Is, this, I might go out more now. This I is, think uh, you should. There's often a tendency to want to categorize people as either a business person or a creative person. But for lots of people and lots of businesses, that line is blurred or really non-existent. Uh, Laurie and Claiborne, you are in very different stages of the development of your respective companies, but you're both right in the middle of the Venn diagram of where business and creativity overlap. I'm looking forward to keeping up with both of you and following your continued success. Thank you both for joining me today on Out to Lunch. Thank, Thank you. you, Peter. It was a lot of fun. My guests on Out to Lunch today have been Lori haspel Aronson, president and CEO of Haspel, and Claiborne Schmidt, founder and owner of Dat Mumbo Shirt. You can find out more about Haspel and Dat Mumbo Shirt by following the links on our website, itsneworleans.com. The producer of our show, is Grant Morris, our technical producer is Eric Merle, and our researcher is Maggie Mendel. You can listen to the show and to past episodes of Out to Lunch wherever you get podcasts, including Spotify. And you can find all of our podcasts at itsneworleans.com. If you want to know what we look like, you can find photos from the show on itsneworleans.com, It's New Orleans Facebook page, and on Instagram. These photos were taken today by Jill LaFleur. You can find more of Jill's photos at lafleurphoto.com. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsneworleans.com and WWNO 89.9 FM. I'm Peter Raschuti. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Commander's Palace for more business New Orleans style on Out to Lunch. Out to Lunch is recorded live over lunch at Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Commander's Palace serves lunch Monday to Friday, jazz brunch on Saturday and Sunday with live music, and dinner seven nights a week. Mitchell Foreman wrote and performs all the music on Out to Lunch. You can hear Mitchell's music anywhere great jazz is sold or streamed and at MitchellForeman.com. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com and by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas, and by Basics Swim and Gym and Basics Underneath Fine Lingerie, the It's New Orleans Happy Hour podcast, and by Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world.